Africa is the most vulnerable continent to climate change. According to the World Bank's World Development Report, 70% of Africa's inhabitants are directly dependent on the climate and environmental resources for their living. So with a predicted temperature rise in Africa that is double the global average over the next 20 years, already we have a catastrophe in the making. These pictures were taken in western Kenya in September 2008. The rains had come early and extremely heavily, resulting in flooding across the region. One of the causes of the flood is deforestation of the highland areas resulting in high runoff from the hills. Another is undoubtedly global warming. Uh, long before, the rainfall used to rain evenly and well distributed. But nowadays what we have are storms, which are irregular and very short. It comes, rains heavily, and then of course the flooding results. It's important to recognize that current farming systems in many areas of Africa are doing little to help resource-poor farmers and environments deal with the challenges of global warming and are in fact contributing to the rising carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere. Here, much of the forest has been cleared to make way for agricultural systems that have proved to be unsustainable, as well as increasing problems of erosion and declining water tables, the people in this area are no longer food secure. Farming of the sugarcane has done a lot of environmental destruction. As you can see, there are no trees around this area. So the climate in this area has changed. Where it was a highland area, it is appearing as if it is a lowland area. Because heat is being now generated, the, uh, the, the environment is not protected. Samuel Oketch is a division manager for VI Agroforestry and the Swedish Cooperative Centre an organization working in western Kenya on the promotion of sustainable systems of agriculture that redress the massive problems of food insecurity, while also restoring extremely damaged environments back to productive and biodiverse landscapes. In so doing, they're not only helping farmers to adapt to the current crises, they're also encouraging systems that will in the long run mitigate the impacts of climate change and increase carbon sequestration through trees, vegetation cover, and soil and water conservation. This is Nancy Omondi and her husband John. They are one family who realised the need for change and embraced the simple technologies brought to them by VI Agroforestry and the Swedish Cooperative Centre. OK, our lives have really changed because a long time ago we really used to walk for food. We could go as far as five kilometres going in search of fuel wood, but right now we have our trees. The time we do even the pruning or we remove the heavy branches, we can just prepare them and stack them so that they may dry and we use them for future fuel wood. Farm-wise, it has also improved our yield because our, our soils are now, once more, they are fertile. By using nitrogen-fixing trees like Cespania cespan and Caliandra, intercropping and planting along contour lines to control soil erosion, Risparogogo no longer needs to buy expensive fertilizers, and her once barren land is providing her with fields of vegetables and fruit. Mimi naona faida kwa njia mingi kwa mwana sasibania ni kuni. Nashaidia mimi kwa njia ya kuni, pia kwa mbusi. Tena iyo kaliandra ni mzuri sana kwa maziwa. At the heart of Unia chariot system are her cows, largely fed by zero grazing methods that reduce her workload to find suitable pastures and also the livestock's own impact on the environment. The highly nutritious Caliandra and Napier grass fodder have doubled the amount of milk the cows produce and she now not only satisfies her family's needs, she also has excess milk to sell. The manure from the cattle is also used with compost on the farm. Together with the nitrogen-fixing trees and minimal tillage, this once degraded and eroded land has been transformed at no cost to the farmer. Wakati ambao nilikuwa sijapanda hii 
Hata nilikuwa hakuna pesa yoyote, tena nilikuwa na konda na watoto. Watoto wakupata chakula mzuri. Na sahi hatuko atusiki njaa yoyote, watoto wanasikia mzuri tena wanaenda sule. Tena tunaendelea mbele, mi naendelea kufundisa watu nae, apande vitu, akue kama mimi. Water harvesting is another critical component in Viagra Forestry and the Swedish Cooperative Centre's approach to decreasing the farmer's vulnerability to climate change. Eddie Ouko has developed a simple drainage system on his farm that allows him to have water all year round, whatever the weather. Life was very difficult in that people were even scared of even making a tree nursery. They could not come because they were asking where will they get water. Because water, we are not next to the water, water mass is very far. You could even walk for almost three kilometers searching for water. So a new invention with the training we got from the SSV Agroforestry, they also train us on how water can be harvested. Now throughout this now my life, the water is there throughout. Eddie's farm is flourishing, and even his children are benefiting from these simple methods, caring for their own tree nursery, selling their small stocks, and contributing to their family's welfare. All these farmers bear testimony to how these simple technologies can change their lives and environments. It's also clear they're not only becoming more resistant to the effects of climate change, they're also mitigating its impacts. The trees absorb carbon, but also the vastly improved soils are now providing a perfect carbon pool. With this in mind, VI Agroforestry and the Swedish Cooperative Centre have started a groundbreaking project with technical assistance from the World Bank Biocarbon Fund that will enable small-scale farmers to benefit from carbon credits for the environmental services they are providing. It's going to help a lot because FAST is going to provide uh, extension service to totally new areas where we've not been. Secondly, it's, it's going to be a learning point for everyone who is concerned with, with carbon issues really because this is the first time it's going to incorporate issues of, of soil and on the revenues that will be paid to the farmers it's they are going to be paid for the service that they are giving to to the world really Africa's problems are many but the scepter of climate change is possibly the most threatening to its people's survival in what is already a very delicate and damaged environment but there are solutions that can transform lives and environments in a very short space of time. By spreading these systems and empowering communities with the knowledge of how they work, people are changing their destinies and in so doing are performing a crucial role in helping to mitigate the impacts of the most pressing threat we all face today. <laughs>